welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast, and to this week's episode of Murder Monday, where we will delve into some of the most mysterious and shocking murders in recent history. Today, we're discussing the murder of tech entrepreneur Fahim Salah, whose brutal death shocked the world and left investigators scrambling for answers. We're going to explore the background about Fahim, the details of his murder, the investigation that followed, and the aftermath of this shocking crime. Join us as we uncover the facts surrounding the unsolved murder of Fahim. Before we do that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this episode. If you're a fan of audiobooks from any kind of genre, check out Audible today at audibletrial.com slash Larry21 and get yourself a free audiobook and free 30-day subscription to Audible. Fahim was a well-known entrepreneur in the tech industry, best known for co-founding the ride-sharing company Pithal which operates in his native Bangladesh. He also founded Gokata, a ride-hailing service in Nigeria, and Kickback Apps, a video gaming company. He was only 33 years old when he was brutally murdered in his luxury apartment in Manhattan on July 14, 2020. His involvement in various startups have made him a millionaire at a young age, and he was known for his passion for technology and innovation. Despite his success in the tech industry, he was known for being down-to-earth and approachable. He was deeply involved in the startup community, mentoring and investing in other entrepreneurs, and was widely respected for his business acumen and creativity. In addition to his career in tech, he was also known for his philanthropic efforts. He had founded the venture capital firm Adventure Capital, which focused on investing in startups and emerging markets, and had also launched the nonprofit organization, the Gokata Foundation, which aimed to empower and educate underprivileged youth in Nigeria. Fahim was born in Saudi Arabia to Bangladeshi parents, but spent much of his childhood in Rochester, New York. He attended Bentley University in Massachusetts, where he studied computer science. He was passionate about technology from a young age and taught himself how to code when he was just a teenager. It is still not entirely clear why Fahim was targeted by his killers, but investigators have suggested that it may have been related to financial disputes or personal vendettas. The circumstances surrounding his death are highly unusual and have left many questions unanswered. In this next segment, we're going to explore the details of his murder and the investigation that followed. On July 14th, 2020, Fahim's cousin went to check on him in his luxury apartment in Manhattan but made a shocking discovery. Fahim's dismembered body was found in the living room with the limbs and head removed and placed in plastic bags. The scene was gruesome and disturbing, leaving investigators and Fahim's loved ones reeling. The details of the crime scene were unsettling. Security footage showed that Fahim had returned to his apartment and building earlier that day, and that a man dressed in black had followed him into the elevator. The footage then showed that the man had used a taser on Fahim as soon as the elevator doors opened, rendering him unconscious. It is believed that the killer then proceeded to dismember Salah's body, but was interrupted midway through the process when his cousin arrived. Investigators found a number of pieces of evidence at the scene of the crime, including an electric saw that was used to dismember his body. The suspect had also attempted to clean up the scene, but had left behind traces of blood and other evidence That would ultimately help investigators track down the killer. Despite this, however, the case remains unsolved and the identity of the killer or killers is still unknown. There are a number of theories surrounding the motive for Salah's murder, including the possibility of financial disputes or personal vendettas. He was known to have been involved in a high number of in a number of high stake business deals and had recently faced legal action related to one of his startups. There were also rumors of personal conflicts in his life, including a dispute with a former employee. In the absence of a clear motive, however, investigators have struggled to identify a suspect or bring the case to a close. The investigation into the murder of Fahim began shortly after his body was discovered in his Manhattan apartment. Detectives from the New York City Police Department were called to the scene and quickly began gathering evidence and interviewing potential witnesses. In the days and weeks that followed, The investigation ramped up with detectives following up on numerous leads and conducting extensive searches for the killers. Despite the police department's best efforts, the case remains unsolved. 
The investigation has been complicated by a number of factors, including the lack of a clear motive and the unusual nature of the crime scene. Fahim's murder was particularly gruesome, and investigators have struggled to make sense of the killer's motives or behavior. In addition, the killers have taken steps to cover their track, making it difficult for investigators to identify any concrete suspects. Despite these challenges, the NYPD has made significant progress in its investigation. They have conducted extensive interviews with individuals close, close to Fahim, including family members, friends, and business associates. They have also used technology to aid in the investigation, including the use of surveillance footage to track the killer's movements, and the use of digital forensics to analyze evidence left behind at the crime scene. The role of technology in the investigation has been particularly important. Surveillance footage from the apartment building where Fahim lived has provided crucial clues about the killer's movements and appearances, allowing investigators to develop a profile of the suspect. In addition, digital forensics has been used to analyze evidence found at the scene of the crime, including the electric saw used to dismember Salon's body. These tools have helped investigators to piece together the events leading up to Fahim's murder and have provided important leads in the search for the killer or killers. Despite these efforts, the case remains unsolved and the killers remain at large. The murder of Fahim had a profound impact on his family, friends, and the tech community. Fahim was well respected in the tech industry and had many close personal relationships with colleagues and investors. His death left many in the industry feeling shocked and devastated. Fahim's family had also been deeply affected by his murder. In addition to the loss of their loved one, they had to grapple with the media attention and ongoing investigation into Fahim's death. They released statements expressing their grief and shock at the loss of Fahim, as well as their hope that justice will be served. The media coverage of the case was intense. Many news outlets closely followed the investigation and provided updates on any developments. Some criticized the media's coverage, arguing that it had been overly sensationalized and focused too much on the gory details of the crime rather than on Fahim's life and achievements. As we've explored in this episode, the murder of Fahim is a complex and multifaceted case with many different factors and theories at play. From Fahim's background in the tech industry to the details of his murder and the ongoing investigation, there's much to un unpack and explore. We encourage our listeners and viewers to continue learning about this case and to keep uh, Fahim's memory alive by seeking justice for him and his loved ones. If you're interested in learning more about the murder of Fahim, you can check out some of the resources below. We'll mention them in the dis uh, description. As always, if you want to support the channel, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash TCNS. Your support helps the channel grow and allows us to hopefully one day take this show on the road as well as hire new writers and be able to pay them. So, as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.